Joining us now, NBC News White House correspondent Monica Alba and senior writer at The Dispatch and author of In Trump's Shadow, uh, David Drucker. So she's debated both these men. They've obviously debated each other before. How is the Biden team, Monica, approaching this debate in, in terms of what Hillary Clinton is warning, that, that there's just no, there's no way that you can try to refute him fact for fact? Yeah, and they really believe that it's not President Biden's job to also spend the entire debate trying to provide any kind of real-time fact check because they say if he did that, he wouldn't have time to try to talk about some of the other key issues that he wants to bring up. So the Biden team is really trying to point to the moderators, saying they hope that they provide some of that. But overall, they say they think Americans will be able to watch and take away from just two completely different and competing visions, and that that is what they're going to really rely on here for the president to try to describe what he views as a positive vision for another term in office if he is to win in November and what he will try to cast as a very dark past in terms of prologue for what it could look like if Donald Trump wins back the White House. So he's going to try to do that. And they really feel like they have to walk a fine line because they want President Biden to appear like the adult in the room at the end of this. I was told by somebody close to the debate prep process, but at the same time, he is really prepared to come out and have some sharp lines of attack against Donald Trump, which we have seen him sort of play with at certain fundraisers or in other settings. But we expect Thursday this will be his most intense line of attack against Donald Trump right there while he's standing next to him, even though he hasn't done that for many years. And four years ago, they did have those debates, but it was so different because of COVID. And back then, President Biden could really spend a a lot of that time with all of his close advisors, the way he has been now huddled up for five days at Camp David in these really intense sessions with a lot of policy experts where they are really going through and doing these full mock debates to get a sense of what it will really be like on Thursday night. Kate. All right, David, what about the, the Trump side of things? Uh, how is uh, the conservative uh, media ecosphere uh, anticipating this debate and, and what are the expectations for Donald Trump? Right. Well, it's been really interesting to watch the differences between how these two candidates are preparing, right? I mean, Joe Biden, the president's at Camp David, uh, what you would expect, intense, normal debate prep out of sight um, behind closed doors. Donald Trump has been uh, giving interviews. He's been hosting campaign rallies, not doing much of the traditional prep. And to some degree, uh, Republicans have been doing uh, President Biden an, an enormous favor by setting expectations extremely low. I mean, so much so that even uh, President, former President Donald Trump has, uh, has come out and, and said that he thinks uh, Joe Biden is, is a formidable debater. He's not too old. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Every time uh, the former president tries to up the expectations, his allies lower them once again to the point where all the president has to do pretty <laughs> much show it up, show up and not fall asleep. And he'll surpass what Republicans are telling us we're going to see. You know, I think the key for Donald Trump is to look calm and measured and not constantly interrupt and attack Joe Biden. And what both of these candidates need to do is, while pairing attacks and being willing to, le mm. to level their strongest attacks in person, they need to spend most of the debate talking to the viewer, not debating each other, but talking to the viewer. That's how you use these events to get voters on your side and really get a good bounce. A veteran pollster, Frank Luntz, um, who does the focus groups after debates and has been doing it now for decades, has said the one thing that he's learned watching all of these debates and watching people watch them is that um, it's about style over substance. It's about getting in a good line and having that line be memorable. It's, it's less about the, the little details that um, the political world picks apart. It's more about the manner of the person uh, and the way they behave on, on that debate stage. So we'll see what the style is like, certainly, along with the substance on Thursday night. Monica Alba, David Drucker, thank you very much. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.